father. What's what spiritual privatism? Uh, spiritual privatism, you sort of close yourself no, from everything else. You just focus on introspection. You're only thinking of your private sphere. So in, in that sense, no, um, you're not really open to the external realities. No, because some methods of yoga actually focus on that. I'm not an expert, but uh, what the document says is spiritual privatism is avoided so, too much concentration on the self. In fact, even in, in our faith, we have to avoid that. No, yung excessive examination of conscience to the point of forgetting the reality already. Excessive introspection, making us scrupulous and uh, likewise, you would say, uh, failing to realize the others, other persons. No? Thank you. May I ask, um, what will you do if you are confronted with your past sins during prayer? Well, the, the main idea or the main uh, point why our Lord also allows it is that we be humble so that we realize our nothingness before God. That only uh, the, the only thing we can do is really, be, without grace, without Him, is to sin. So it is a, a, a very in, uh, important instrument or tool to deepen uh, what he called contrition. And that is love, love sorrow. So when you feel it and you see it, uh, thank you, Lord, because you make me realize that I love you and I, uh, I, I pride with that, that sorrow for everything that I am and who I am really in front of you. I'm a sinner. Nothing of pride or uh, we don't deserve anything. But it should not Thank make you. us depressed. It should not discourage us. It's more to lift us up towards the L, capital L, O, V, to love. There is a group known as the Divine Will or followers of Luisa Picareta. They encourage that their will be that of God's and that there is no human will, but they will be divine. I have to do research on the name uh, Luisa Picareta. Your description uh, speaks of the summary. You know? There's a great danger to this. It's the disappearance of the person. Because without the will of ours, no, we cannot, quote-unquote, um, be the, the persons we are designed to be. We cannot ha lose our freedom. Even if we are in heaven, we also are free. <laughs> the angels are free. It's just that freedom is uh, the capacity to do the good. And they're doing it. They're using it. It's the maximum of freedom. So there's a danger in that uh, statement that it was uh, highlighted. No human will no, it means no freedom because it could be abused by a tyrant. No? And this is the will of God, this has to be done, etc. etc. Thank you for the question. Father, uh, thank you for the lecture, she says. As a parent, how can we mm. help our children 
continued to pray. It was easy when they were young, but as they enter adolescence, we seem to lose them. The world seems mm. to compete with us in helping them have a relationship with God. We know we can count on grace, but how can we sustain what they have started when they were when they were young? Thank you for the question. Actually, I I was uh hinting in the idea earlier with the Serrano Bergera clip no? that our kids no, will need to pray on their own. We cannot do it for them. And we'll only provide the atmosphere so that they learn it. At the earlier stages, really, uh, we will learn this art and journey of prayer. It's a vocal prayer. But we cannot say, really, <laughs> it's the mystery of the person. If they are praying, that we will have to pray a lot so that they pray because they could be parroting. Just like the, the guy, Christian, in front of Roxanne, it's not his words. And he cannot, we cannot teach. We cannot teach. We can um, uh, teach, obviously, but we cannot make a person love. And we cannot make a person um, pray. No, uh, we cannot. It's going to be him. It's going to be her. So at the, at the earlier years, it really is training them to direct themselves to God. One technique is vocal prayer. And another technique is that you go to the blessed sacrament, the two of you, with your son, your daughter, in their, uh, in their younger years, and teach or show what mental prayer is. We'll go that about uh, go through that with the journey, meaning that you also have time really to, to, to talk to him, to listen to him. You know? And then your, your kid most likely will see you, will look at you, ah, that's, that's praying. No? Of course, uh, the other thing is also prayer. But it could be also clashing of tin cans. No, it's it's it, it could be empty as well. No, so um, I think first and foremost to help our kids, our young people, is to really master ourselves uh, the prayer and to pray better, our vocal prayers and our mental prayers. Meaning that we show them a good example that consistent is consistent also with their attitudes. We say if we pray and we are not good parents or we are not good persons. And most likely, all the example disappears. Okay, now go to the going to the uh, adolescence. It's the same. I feel it's praying, meaning deep prayer for ourselves, and then leading them to that path you know, that they also are inspired. They see the benefits of such because you change each time you pray. You're so inspired also to do the good things after you pray. I think that's the most powerful rather than talking about you have to pray. No, they're bombarded with it. Uh, left and right sometimes. No, it, it, it cannot make you pray. You have to pray yourself. No, especially when a person reaches already adolescent. Respect them. And really pray to our Lord that He also engage our children. No, um, uh, I'm using the lecture for today. No? The intimacy really um, is, is, is between our children and God. Eh? So if they did not really contact him, no, they may have been reciting Hail Marys. They may have been, but they did not really pray. I think it will be difficult that they also get, get the idea, get the hang of it later. So at a young age, really, to make them, I mean, really intimate with God no? in their own way. Now, uh, and then for adolescents and adults, it's just being there, prayer for ourselves and praying to God. No, that uh, he attracts them to a life of prayer as well, our children. Thank you, Father. Yeah. Father, what can you say about using music to provide ambiance for prayer? It is <laughs> helpful for me, uh, the lady says, but I am not sure if that is even correct. Yeah, yes and no. no? Um, our Lord is so understanding, it's so good. Uh, and then some tools are also used so that we can arrive at him facilitated in a facilitated manner. And music is one. No? However, I would say no, sometimes that it's good also as a training to do away with music. Why? Because sometimes eh, we won't have the same state of emotion. Even though we thought we, we heard or listened to a music or genre of our type. Now, it's, I think, a very subjective thing. Pero in general... Uh, we the state of emotion affects the absorption of the music genre or the you know. so it could also you would say de become a dependent thing for the person um, that it's difficult for her to pray because there's no music so it's good to train ourselves that our state of emotion is not the whole foundation of our prayer 
that sometimes we will go against the grain. We will be dry, really. Um, it's part of it. That That's love. The same way as those who are married here know, and those who have dedicated themselves to God know, that it's not always rosy or flowery <laughs> in terms of um, our, our manifestations of love. And likewise, prayer. Uh, so some dryness here and there. You know? uh, so if the music uh, is the is always there, uh, we could be all thinking there has to be music all the time, and without such, we cannot pray. So our our, our prayer becomes so dependent on states of emotion. You know? So yes and no. You know? There's nothing wrong. You know? In the mass, sometimes we can attend it more fervently when the the choir you know, is is really tops. You know? Honestly, though, on a personal note, I don't. I don't. I don't use music. <laughs> but if you... Uh, I respect you. I cannot dictate methods of prayer. <laughs> During gatherings like office meetings and you are asked to lead a prayer, what is a good sort of generic prayer to say? Yeah, you, you have to know who are listening to you. Um, if you are Catholics, there's nothing wrong, I think, with really a Catholic prayer. Through Christ our Lord... Holy Mary mentioned the saints. No? Now it's for Christians. Then you don't uh, perhaps uh, 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 mention the sign of the cross no? to respect the others so that they're not ashamed of uh, not doing it because they never did it. Um, it's a sign of respect, simply put. No? If there are Muslims, a very generic one. God, the, uh, how do you call this? Uh, you are accompanying us or something like that. Uh, it's good to prepare if you are leading the prayer because sometimes when you are just uh, spontaneously saying it, you can utter words that are maybe off. No? I'll be honest, sometimes I also am forced to do the spontaneous because uh, we, we sometimes as priests, uh, we are asked, oh, brother, can you lead the prayer? And then <laughs> all of a sudden, so uh, if you have that experience, you ask the Holy Spirit immediately. No? Come Holy Spirit. Uh, lead my, uh, my my speech you know, so that I can pray something. Um, it's the the ACTS likewise that could guide you something to um, if in a generic way the Creator the world uh, you created all these things you allowed us to partake of this food uh, uh, something about contrition we know that we have done some things that are wrong um, by Thanksgiving but we are grateful grateful we are all gathered here and then we ask you. That our office, that our community continues to grow and love one another, respect each other, each other's faith, each other's belief, each other's uh, preference, each other's political affiliations. So you see the ACTS is a wonderful thing already to start with. Thank you, Father. Father, this is a, a follow-up question of the parent who wants to help the children go back to prayer. So... Um, mm -hmm. So she understands that they, they cannot control the children, but they notice that the children are always with their earphones stuck to their ears. So mm -hmm. how can we help them in a natural way appreciate silence so that they can pray? Yeah, uh, this is very tough. Right? If you did not uh, uh, train them to have the family meals, for example, uh, sacred, uh, I think we can start with that. If you still have... Um, an opportunity to reinvent the rules if there was no rule at all okay the meals no one uses the headphone and then you interact meaning in a very personal way because sometimes or many times the way we deal with the lord is how we deal with one another meaning the talk to like the father to a mother the, the things that we have studied earlier is very applicable here so if you are, your kids are always the headphones they actually don't know how to talk <laughs> Your kids are always eating and then <laughs> not listening to you and to the conversation. They have missed it. Now, and the pandemic has also worsened it. Now, we have isolated ourselves even when we are together. I remember uh, high schoolers always having this. Uh, I have the experience of seeing them together, but they're not talking among themselves. They are with their cell phones, each on his own. Now. So they're not interacting. So maybe it's encouraging the beauty of the conversation. To start with, you know, the meals, you know, okay, we all interact. You, know, you pinch here and there. Uh, you be patient. Of course, there are children who will take time before they learn how to, how to talk, how to share an experience, how to listen. You know? So start with that. Uh, and, and then later on, as you have these sacred moments already, just 
prepare well the prayers before and after meals. Maybe you can include the spontaneity there. You know? Or sometimes you can prepare. Let's pray because uh, here in this meal, we are thanking our Lord because uh, somebody got an honor. I mean, uh, I was recognized a cum laude or a summa cum laude or something. Or, or you, you, you say it and then they join your intention. And then you can also ask them, okay, let's go to the mass. Uh, meaning uh, people were afraid during the pandemic. No, 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 wait a minute. We are eating outside. We are in a mall right now. Why can't we go there? And then they learn. The community is standing up, kneeling down, without you forcing the issue. Help your children pray. Help them. Because you cannot, you can't control that. Uh, encouraging, very encouraging. No? They, do, they say no. Okay, that doesn't matter. No? You tell our Lord. You plead, you talk to our Lord more about your children than talking to them about God. No, uh, more to God no, for our children. Father, <laughs> this is a related question, but this time it's not the children, but the spouse. So how do you encourage uh, your spouse to go to Mass at least every Sunday since he is currently abroad and far away? Uh, from yeah, the you, can, you cannot do much. You cannot, you cannot do much if he's abroad, really. No? The best thing is really to talk to God that he realizes the beauty of such no? and um, encourage your family members to also join you to also uh, join in the mass and then take a photo and then send it to uh, no, to him we have gone to mass hope you can join us in spirit period or maybe you can go there on your own uh, but but when it comes to spouses apostolate really will have to be by example no um, a lot a big chunk of it no and we cannot preach to the better half no? Uh, you, the married women here, married ladies, you cannot be preachy you know, to your husbands. You just have to be very prayerful, very consistent, and very holy, very holy, if you can, uh, with the grace of God. And that's the way, that's the way. Um, and many times without words, that you lead them to, to, to God. Okay? I have a question. Do you have some tips? Uh, is there... Like a certain like th disposition that you can have before praying, like uh yeah, so that you can get always um like the most out of your time when you do your prayer. I mean, yeah, um, yeah. you want to be properly disposed right before praying, so that you can really listen to yeah. our Lord. Ideally, you really pause and uh, have a few minutes without doing anything and then trying to condition the mind ideally but it's an ideal world but sometimes you are forced to really with the time compress time and, and so that you're uh exclusively doing one thing for the lord and he's, she's talking about mental prayer for those um other listeners that's talking about that dedicated prayer how would you do it best i would simply say in the the starting prayer say it very very slow my lord and my god and stop there <laughs> and then you can really pray better i firmly believe now wait a minute what am i saying here i firmly i firmly believe that he is here and look look at that we've done this before you i i've said it rather um get a chair i firmly believe that you are like they in that chair that you see me oh my you're seeing me. I'm lying down in the bed, in my bed. <laughs> I'm not dressed well. Don't you see me? <laughs> I have other things in front of me. I have a mess right now, and I tell you that. But you see me well. That you hear me. That you hear me. No. And then uh, you can continue. Say it well. Then uh, uh, another thing is to do it for the others. Uh, realize that you are doing the prayer because you want to talk to God about your loved ones. And sometimes that works as well. Uh, today, Lord, I want to talk to you about my spouse. <laughs> I want to understand him. I want to talk to you about my father, my mother, my brother, my sister. I want to talk to you about my career. Uh, sometimes uh, very concrete uh, content of mental prayer, a concrete topic. Uh, can do the trick already. You know? There's the purpose, really, of the conversation. And then you have a book, just in case, uh, a gadget that will not be connected to the internet or whatsoever, um, so that you won't get distracted. But just in case there's, there are no words, you read, and then you ask our Lord, Lord, what are you telling me in that point or in that reading? Let's pray. 
In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, our hope, handmaid of the Lord, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you ladies, for joining. Thank, thank you, you everyone. everyone.